Hello, welcome to part two of this watercolor and gouache painting session. Today I'm going to be painting something with the Kiritake paints and the Daniel Smith gouache and the Rembrandt watercolors. While I am painting, I'm going to be giving you guys five tips to improving your artwork. I would like to say that these tips are my opinion and that you may be doing these things already, but let's go ahead and check out and see what I've come up with while I paint something with these amazing paints. Hello, my name is Vanessa and I make art videos on anything art related, a little bit of this and that. If that speaks to you, consider subscribing. Before I go into my five tips for improving your artwork, I would like to mention what I'm making. This is going to be a painting of a hummingbird and some mushrooms. I'm starting off by doing the wet on wet technique and all that means is that I am putting water as my base and I'm dropping in the pigment. I'm starting off with a Kiritake Art Nouveau set of watercolor and I'm doing the wet on wet technique so that I can have a nice blurred background. So now let's begin with the five tips. Now these tips for improving your artwork are going to be more for the artist that is into representational artwork. So if you like artwork that represents images and objects of anything like people, anything in nature, landscapes, etc., these tips will be helpful to you. Just a little background about myself. I am a high school art teacher and I have 15 years of teaching experience. So these tips I have gathered are coming from a standpoint of an educator and working with a lot of the youth and seeing things that they've done and me actually giving them advice to improve their artwork. So again, that's where I'm coming from. Tip number one is going to be use reference pictures. And to put it simply, the reason for doing this is that they are there to help you with the details structure, scale, lighting, and shadows. Often I will hear my students tell me, isn't that cheating? And I tell them, no, it's not. As a young artist or a new artist, you really need to go out and look for images to refer to to actually help you out. All the information is there. It's just you as the artist being able to look at it and put it down on paper. Furthermore, the visual information is there for you to use and copy. Most artists, such as my friends and colleagues, agree with me with this particular practice. It is a very common practice. You'll see a lot of artists contemporary and in the past that will use reference pictures. And back in time, in let's say the Renaissance period, they actually worked from live models to help them out in order to get their pictures as they wanted them. So if you're going for more representational work and realism, you really want to use this practice. And like my art teacher from high school used to tell me, she would always tell the class, draw what you see and don't draw what you think you see. Moving on to tip number two, research other artists. The reason for this is for you to study their technique, maybe their style that you like. Also, it's important to look at their use of the elements, like how do they use color? And how do they use value and composition? These are all important things to help you improve the aesthetic of your artwork. I recommend finding multiple artists to look at. So what you see out on the internet, contemporary, and also from different genres. I like Art Nouveau, that's one of the styles that I like, and Renaissance Time has some really beautiful artwork out there. Um, other artists that I admire would be like Frida Kahlo, Georgia O'Keeffe, Van Gogh, and there's so many more that I can name.
Okay, there's this thought that I want to throw out there, and here it is. Originality is not really a thing. Let me explain. The reason for this is that all artists are influenced by other artists in some way, shape, or form. That's the great thing about art, is that as an artist, you're pretty much taking influences that you've seen that surround you in real life from your experiences, looking at other artwork, and you extract from that and come up with your own version of it. And that's the beauty of artwork. So go out there and start doing some research. Look up other artists that you admire and take a look at how they use composition, light, shadow, form, and all that good stuff that makes artwork look nice. So the base that I just finished was the Kiritaki Art Nouveau watercolors and now I am adding the Rembrandt watercolors for the mushrooms and the hummingbird. Here is tip number three. In the beginning stages, don't get caught up on the details. What you want to do is to work from general to specific. Best practice would be to work out basic shapes and forms in line work and also block in areas of deep shadow. This is your foundation. Once you have a solid foundation, you can build from there. A strong foundation drawing will lead to a strong outcome. Furthermore, once you have that base layer all outlined, you can go in and in stages and in layers and start to add more detail little by little. And then finishing off with fine tuning everything like making values darker, adding highlights, refining edges, and just overall fine tuning everything up just to get your artwork where you want it to be. Another thing I wanted to add before moving on to the next one is that you really want to focus on starting off with basic shapes when you are doing your preliminary drawing. For example, basic shapes like circles, ovals, cylinders, squares, triangles, those are all present in the most complicated images that we draw. From those basic shapes, you'll move forward and start to refine your edges, make areas where you will add and subtract to give it the shape that you want on the specific image that you're drawing. On this particular painting that I'm currently working on, I used basic shape for the mushrooms. The stem would be more of a cylinder shape, and for the top of the mushroom, I used an oval. Then from there, I went and refined my edges to give it the organic lines or outlines that you see here. And for the hummingbird, I used an oval shape for the body and then a circle for the head, and I built from there. it's time for tip number four. Allow yourself to make mistakes. To begin explaining this tip, perfect does not exist. This mindset of perfectionism will discourage challenging yourself. It is a good practice to push yourself to experiment and explore, and if it does not come out, that's okay. It's part of your journey. In all honesty, you will learn much more from mistakes than when you are doing things right all the time. Now, don't get me wrong, creating what is safe always is a good practice, but sometimes you should challenge yourself to work a bit out of your comfort zone. Mistakes can be present within a comfort zone and outside of it as well. The great thing about a challenge is that it will develop skill and that is where the growth will take place. 
So be at peace with quote unquote mistakes. My definition of a mistake is basically what you did not intend. Sometimes what you did not intend, you can get some really creative and interesting results. There's a saying that goes, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. Isn't that so true? At this time, I would like to share with you my impression of using this paint. So I am loving this paint. The Kiritake is great, but then once I started using the Rembrandt, which I started to use on the mushrooms and the hummingbird, let me tell you, it is a dream to work with. They are super easy to use. The colors are pigmented and I just love them. Okay, here comes the last tip. Tip number five, practice and then practice some more. So before I go on talking more about tip number five, this color that I am dropping in is Rembrandt's Pink Dusk and it is the star of the show in terms of painting the mushrooms and the hummingbird. I just love it. Back to explaining tip number five, practicing. Actually, there is no shortcut. I know in a world where everything is easy at the touch of a button, you will have to condition yourself to build skill and to build muscle memory. Now I speak from experience since I do work with the youth and their attention span and desire for things to come so easily to them is one of my primary issues in the classroom. I have to break that barrier with them and teach them to slow down and get used to taking the time to build skill. Once they get the buy-in of this process of practicing and then seeing success, and once they see that success, then they understand why they do all the practices before they do a final project. It really gets them prepared for, let's say, showtime. Here is an analogy I would like to share with you. It's like an athlete that does not show up to practice and expects to perform at full strength, skill, and ability on game day. Anything that requires skill takes practice to build and sustain your abilities. A desired result takes a lot of time and effort, but the best thing about it and the most important thing to keep in mind is to enjoy your journey. Your journey is unique to you. It's important to always celebrate every victory. Take a moment and give yourself a break and a congratulations, a round of applause. Celebrate those small and big successes because all of them are important. Furthermore, it is an important thing to keep your thoughts on the positive side. What you say to yourself really has an impact on how you feel about yourself. And how you feel about yourself has an impact on the things that you do. So at this time, I would like for all of us just to take a moment and repeat after me. Tell yourself, I am doing great. I'm trying my best and that's what counts. That's all that matters. All right, I would like to spend a moment back on the painting process. Here I am actually using the Daniel Smith gouache. I was trying to figure out how I was going to incorporate it with the watercolors because the watercolors that I have are a different color story than the Daniel Smith colors. And so I decided to use them on the butterflies. These butterflies that I have here, and I'm gonna add some 
little bit of butterflies, sprinkle them around here and there in the background. So now we are towards the end of this video and let's review the five tips that I went over. Tip number one, use reference pictures. This will strengthen your drawing or painting. Tip number two, research other artists, gain inspiration, see what's been done and what you can learn from other artists. Number three, don't get caught up in the details in the beginning stages build from simple to more complex. Tip number four, allow yourself to make mistakes. This is where growth happens. Last tip, number five, practice and then practice some more. This is going to be so beneficial to your art journey by building your skill. And those are my five tips. Here I'm doing the famous tape peel however it is not pretty i tore some of the paper what i should have done was warmed up the tape by taking a heat gun or a blow dryer to sort of warm up the adhesive in order to get a clean peel but that didn't happen full confession i was too lazy to go upstairs and grab my hair dryer here is the completed painting i just finished writing down the paints that I used. I had fun using all of these paints and I sure hope that you liked this video. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me today and I hope you have a wonderful, most inspiring creative day and I'll see you next time.